Yeah, I learned about the plastic, um, the garbage patch, and I was like, oh my god, like, I felt like disgusted that we humans have like produced so much plastic that the size is just overwhelmingly like humongous. And exactly. And the fact that yeah. a lot of people are careless. I mean, I'm going to the beach. Um, I went to the beach actually this morning and it, it makes me so happy that like I saw a man putting, um, like picking up after his garbage. So putting it inside a bag. But it also made me think, why am I appreciating him for picking up after himself? That's something that people are supposed to do. So. Mm -hmm. I feel like people have taken our planet for granted and mm -hmm. I I time and time again I realize that there is no planet B. Hi guys, my name is Caitlin. Hey, it's Angela and this is and this is Earth Linking. Today we are joined with Bye Bye Plastic Bags from New Jersey. They are a youth-led organization that strives to prevent the usage of plastic bags and raise awareness on environmental issues around the world. How are you guys today? Awesome. I'm doing great. Great. That's good to hear. Uh, can you guys tell us about yourselves a bit? So, my name is Farooja. Um, I am going to be a rising sophomore and I am from Edison, New Jersey. I'm super passionate about graphic designing, social media um, marketing, and um, raising climate awareness, which is why I joined Bye Bye Plastic Bags. My name is Purva. I am a rising senior at the Middlesex County Academy for Science, Math, and Engineering. And as an aspi aspiring engineer, I'm really passionate about sustainable development and designing spaces where kind of both development and conservation can coexist. And I love music. Um, I sing, I play the violin and the ukulele. I actually recently started playing the piano. And what's incredible um, about music is like that it's such a beautiful coping mechanism. So it's just like a great way to leave my work behind and just feel the music within me. Um, I also really enjoy writing poetry and journaling, and I recently founding that, found that writing helps me deal with the emotional side of being involved in this movement and kind of helps me ground myself in what I'm striving for and why I'm part of the climate movement. Can you guys tell us a bit about what Bye Bye Plastic Bags is and why you guys wanted to create this organization? Absolutely. So Bye Bye Plastic Bags is actually a global movement of youth that really raise awareness about the impacts of plastic pollution. And we really work um, on the policy level in our communities to ban single-use plastics. And there's over 25 teams across the globe. Um, and by educating young people about plastic pollution and really trying to give them a platform to get involved with, um, we really want to strive to show that they're leaders and creating change uh, as change makers. Um, so especially in New Jersey, we really, really want to work to help students um, take their futures into their own hands and kind of be empowered to know that they can be change makers and create real change in their communities. Oh, wow. Yeah, I really like your organization's purpose. Mm -hmm. um, also on Instagram, we noticed that there were multiple locations of Bye Bye Plastic, one in New Jersey, I think one started in, in um, Indonesia, if I'm not wrong, yeah. So can you guys give us a more details about where your location, your organization is located at, and where did your organization originally start? Yeah, so we are uh, representatives of the New Jersey chapter of Bye Bye Plastic Bags but the movement was founded in Bali, Indonesia by two sisters, Malati and Isabel. And they basically um, were inspired to take action on plastic pollution. And so I was really like um, motivated to take that first step and start a chapter in New Jersey when I watched their TED talk. And I was really inspired by the um, like action that they were taking. And I realized that because I cared a lot about the environment, I didn't really know how I need, wanted to start. And so because plastic pollution was this issue that you know I was seeing all around me, whether it was like riding the bus to school or even visiting the beach, it was just something that was very in front of my eyes and I could witness it before me. So I knew that I wanted to take action and that's why I started a team in New Jersey. Mm. And I joined it for 
mostly the same reasons. I I actually watched another TED talk about um, global like climate awareness and it made me realize that our world it's changing so rapidly and plastic pollution continues to be a problem and our world needs people like us who are willing to make change and we can only make change if we all come together as one to battle this problem so I wanted to join this global movement and um, our chapter in New Jersey because this is something that matters to me and I know that I um, at the end of the day I know that I was able to help help the world in any way that right. I can yeah very inspirational um okay so on your instagram we saw that you guys offer webinars regarding plastic pollution and wanting to prevent that so can you guys elaborate on that? yeah absolutely so we really started thinking about how to creatively engage with our audience um, because of the current pandemic and really being able to keep true to our motives and continue to interact with people and raise awareness about environmental issues. Because beforehand we were running a lot of in-person workshops and really trying to make that in-person connection. So we realized that we could still keep doing that and even broaden our base and kind of have people from all across the state attending events, which was really not possible before. So because of that, we started running a webinar series and we've currently completed two of them. So the first one was about plastic pollution awareness and we kind of just gave a synopsis of what our organization is really about, our core principles, and we talked about plastic pollution on its entire life cycle. And then we also um, incorporated a guest speaker, which is something that we've been trying to do for all our webinars by spotlighting amazing environmental advocates that have been part of this movement for so long. So we've really been um, really um, encouraging them to spread awareness about their causes. So we had that. And then for our second webinar, we um, had a, a Q&A session about Green Amendment for the Generations. And basically what they're trying to do is push forward a constitutional um, protection saying that we all deserve a right to clean air, clean water and justice. And so they're starting on a grassroots state level and they're hoping to um, build up pressure so that we can get to a national level and have this basic right as part of our constitution. So it was really exciting to interview Maya Van Rossum, who was the mm -hmm. founder of that organization. And we're continuing to plan future webinars. Um, our next one we're really excited for, it's going to be focusing on climate justice and um, environmental racism, especially pertaining to the current climate and all the people that have stepped up to address racial injustices. So it's really exciting to see the intersection it has with current events and issues and also really highlighting how plastic pollution actually intersects so much with climate justice because there's so many people who live in toxic, uh, toxic areas where you know plastic is incinerated and all that. So they're being affected directly by plastic pollution and not many people know about that. So we're definitely really excited um, for this webinar and also for anything else that we um, continue to do because we're hoping to run webinars um, through the course of the next couple of months. So we're excited to see where it goes. Right, and this topic of our next presentation kind of coincides with intersectional environmentalism, which is um, the inclusive version of environmentalism that advocates for both the protection of people and the planet because after all environmental justice is racial justice mm -hmm. and i feel like that's something that people need to understand more so really looking forward to this next webinar yeah i think it's quite interesting because previously we've um, interviewed an organization called Envi youth for environmental justice and they introduced like this idea of, like environmental racism and standing up against um just environmental racism and how they like when they went to school their surrounding environments were full of factories that had like terrible air quality and i was like i'm lucky enough to not experience that and like just having you guys mention it like oh yeah this is actually a serious issue that we need to address yeah and also talking about the webinars like uh i think you guys just started it recently because you only had like a couple so far so were there anything you guys learned from webinars or something that it left a deep impression on you guys 
Definitely. There were a lot of things that differed between running these webinars and in-person meetings. Obviously, we could have those one-on-one -on -one connections and really talk to people easily if they had questions. So that was definitely a challenge with running webinars, but we've really been trying to creatively engage with people and think of new ways that we could still have people feel like they're involved and their voice matters. So that's why we've been definitely urging them to get involved because there's so many ways that you can get involved with our organization, whether by joining the state team or by starting a club in your school or just by being a volunteer and learning about different ways that you can get trained and build your skills as a leader. So there's really a lot of opportunities for that, but also within our webinars, we're trying to incorporate some more fun elements where they could answer certain quiz questions and we can get to like better know the members and also encouraging them to ask more questions to our guest speakers because that way they'll be able to feel more involved and as if they're part of the conversation rather than just viewers or people who are just um, a distance away and just kind of observing something. So that was definitely something that we had to realize over the course of these two presentations, but we're really excited to continue to grow um, with this webinar um, style uh, presentation. Um, and hopefully that will be able to continue to improve them and uh, collect feedback as well. Also something that I was able to just take away is that it's astonishing that people, um, their efforts to like, you know, combat plastic pollution and um, it, it's really important to realize that people also care about this problem. And when, when you talk and you join these webinars, you realize that um, there's so many different avenues that you can take to really um, come up with a solution with your community. So uh, it's, it's important to realize that um, even through Instagram, this just community that we've built, it's mm -hmm. rare, it's, I think it's very special because you realize that there's other people out there that believe in the same things that you do in to, and you know, together we can just combat this problem. So, seeing that you guys uh, joined or created Bye Bye Plastic Bags, and you guys do these like awareness, you make awareness and you offer um, do these webinars. Do you guys think that before you create this organization, you have a good perspective on the environment? Yeah, so for me, um, I definitely really cared a lot about the environment and I honestly just wanted to take meaningful action to help the planet. I love being outdoors in nature and when I started reading and learning about how we were destroying wildlife and ecosystems around the world were being threatened, and previously I didn't really know the scale of the problem at hand, but once I started like learning about it and doing some research on my own, I felt like a really deep urge within me to do something about it. And so even if it was something small, I wanted to do whatever was within my reach, but know that I was making an impact even as a young person. So um, I really, uh, as I mentioned before, I learned about the initiative for bio plastic bags that was started in Bali. And so I just took that step to, you know what, I'm going to start a chapter in New Jersey. And so I talked to my close family members and friends, and I decided that we would start a team. And so we um, shared our ideas with the global network and they liked it. So we were able to get involved and share our enthusiasm for environmental advocacy. And so since last December, we've been really focusing more on our outreach and providing more youth with the opportunity to get involved. So we went from having just five members trying to um, run events across the state and engage with um, young people to now 25 statewide leaders and volunteers. And so we're really looking to continue to grow and involve more youth by running a recruitment drive in late September. So we're really excited for that. For me, I, I remember it was seventh grade and our teacher was like, you have to write a research paper. And I stumbled upon the Great Pacific Garbage Patch 
And um, I remember researching about it and like the statistics just honestly blew me away. The amount of, of plastic that is collected in those um, garbage patches and the fact that there's not just one, but there's multiple across all of our oceans. It just, there's something that like inside me that was like, this is not all right. And I need to do something, um, whatever I can to help that problem. And I, I realized that there was like um, actual boats and machines that they had to try to um, collect all that plastic. But mm -hmm. it was really just minute in comparison to like the tons of plastic that gets accumulated every year. And um, so ever since seventh grade, I knew that there was something that I had to do to help this. Um, but so I was really fortunate to come across Bye Bye Plastic Bags um, a few months ago, and that's when I joined the team. And I wanted to help in any way that I can. And I'm so fortunate that uh, Perfa has allowed me to handle our social media. So using my knowledge of social media and trying to make cool graphics to just really attract people to our cause because together, like I've been saying, together we can create change. So um, I really want to use this Instagram platform um, as a way to help our community. Um, mm -hmm. And with everything that's going on in the world, I think this is some a platform that we can use to build each other up. Yeah, that's right. When I was, yeah, I learned about the plastic, um, the garbage patch. And I was like, oh my God, like, I felt like disgusted that like we humans have like, can, like produced so much plastic that like the size is just overwhelmingly like humongous. And exactly. And the fact that yeah. a lot of people are careless. I mean, I'm going to the beach. Um, I went to the beach actually this morning and it, it makes me so happy that like I saw a man putting, um, like picking up after his garbage. So putting it inside a bag. But it also made me think, why am I appreciating him for picking up after himself? That's something that people are supposed to do. So. Mm -hmm. I feel like people have taken our planet for granted and mm -hmm. I, I time and time again I realize that there is no planet B um, so we have what we have and um, people really they need to like um, take care after themselves pick up their garbage close the light when they're not using it uh, we don't realize how trivial these things are yeah, yeah and just to add on to that, I noticed that you really um, are pushing forward individual action, but it's also really important to keep in mind systemic action and how we can collectively take action. Because if you look at plastic and how it was created, you know, it was originally supposed to be a material to last a lifetime. It was supposed to be something that was created to, you know, last us forever. And instead, now it's being used for single use items. We use a plastic bag for an average of 11 minutes and then we throw it away. And so in our environment, it breaks down into microplastics. And that's why it's becoming such a huge problem, whether it be bags or um, bottles or straws or anything. It's that we're taking this item that should be lasting forever and turning it into something that we are just disposing of um, on a daily basis. So it's really important to be mindful that on an individual level, how much change we're making, but also as a community, how much of a change can we make to ban single use plastic bags in our communities. And that's why I think like having an organization is so important, just because we're able to be, create a network and unify ourselves in our message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just why we're so grateful to meet you too because it's so happy to see people across like the country and the world um, supporting the same causes that we are. Exactly. And even just like making like the most smallest steps that like us individually can do, like reusing plastic bags, not um, trying to not use like plastic straws, um, just doing like, those little small steps can make such a big impact. And especially how both of us are like youth led organizations trying to have the same initiative. I really think that's really inspiring because in our school, we don't really have a lot of clubs that highlight this type of issue so that's why we created earth linking just to raise awareness on it and just being able to talk to you guys about this and seeing how you're making also an impact on trying to 
um, health environment as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like schools, um, they don't care about this issue as much as they should. The amount of paper that gets wasted, and um, I remember in my middle school that like when the little custodian is cleaning, they have like all the lights and all the rooms on. And I feel like they might think it's not important, but if you're not using it, you can turn it off. And I feel like people are like, since I'm not the one paying the light bill, why should I care? But it matters. And these actions build up. I remember I was reading an article about overshoot day and we even made a post about it on our Instagram that um, he's little like, Right now, all right now until the end of the year, everything that we're using, we're taking away from future years that Earth has. So let's try to avoid that. Yeah, and just to add on to that about schools, um, not just like the actions that the school takes, but one thing that I've definitely noticed we should really um, like continue to strive for in our schools is like education, you know? Like I really didn't have access to much of an education about environmental issues in my school for a long time. And this knowledge is something that can really be built from a very young age and instilled the practices and understanding of environmentalism and kind of um, like giving children at that knowledge at a young age is a really great opportunity and kind of incorporating climate into our discussions in the classroom space. I think that would be a really great opportunity to create change, but also create this new generation of environmental leaders. So I'm really hoping that's something that we could continue to push forward. Mm -hmm. And sorry, I'm just bouncing back of Purva. Um, in middle school and even in school in general, we are given seminars on security and cybersecurity. And not to say that those issues aren't important because I'm a huge advocate for all of those, but also I feel like it's so important um, to educate people about um, our world and climate awareness and plastic pollution and ways that we can help. Yeah, definitely. I completely agree with you guys. Like, I really strongly believe that if schools could be more focused and have more classes or uh, workshops dedicated to like being um, environmentally aware and all these things, then definitely the youth could be more empowered and standing to make a change. And like, yeah, schools, they do like, I personally have a lot of like math worksheets that are all paper and at the end of the year, I just recycle them or just, I don't even know like students who just throw it away and like even workbooks, they just throw it away. And it's very really just sad to see all oh, so much paper is just being disregarded. Yeah, also, um, on Instagram, we noticed that you guys have Tuesday trivia. So can you guys uh, describe more about what they are? Sure, I would love that. So it's just something fun that I came up with. And I remember sharing it with Perva the first time we had our meeting together. And Perva was like, yes, go for it. So it's just small facts, trivia, um, mm -hmm. and informing people about statistics that like it's supposed to make them really think about how vast this problem is and just, you know, like simple facts, whether it's from like the highest temperature um, one year um, or how much plastic gets accumulated in our garbage patches. It's just small facts um, that you're like scrolling through Instagram. It's like, hey, I actually learned something. And um, what we also try to incorporate in our captions is like, okay, so you've learned this, but now how can you fix it? So if you've seen something about like recycle, make sure to recycle your plastic bottles. Um, I remember like, even though schools often have trash cans for plastic, people aren't, people don't like, they're lazy and they'll put like plastic bottles in regular trash cans. They're like, what difference does it make? Because I feel like people think in the end, it goes to the same place. And that's where the education comes, telling them that it doesn't, and we actually recycle them, and we reuse them, and we're trying to save the planet here. Yeah, and just to add on about the Tuesday trivia, what I like about it and what makes me so happy about it is what I tend to notice um, is that a lot of people, 
this information about plastic pollution can be overwhelming for a lot of us, you know, it's a lot to take in at once. So kind of giving a little bit of information fact by fact, and like every week, it just gives um, our platform and the people that we that follow us something to learn each week, but also just reminds them to uh, take a step back and reflect about their impact on the environment. And because Varija brought up recycling, I just want to mention that, especially within plastic pollution, it's really important that we remember that recycling, unfortunately, hasn't been working. Um, only around 9% of uh, plastic waste that ends up being recycled actually ends up actually um, being repurposed um, and recycled into a new material. And that's because of just the way that the recycling system is set up. So what we've noticed is that really transforming the way we speak about plastic pollution and instead calling it a reuse revolution really helps. You know, if you have a plastic bag at home, why don't you reuse it for something? Why can't you do an art project with it? So kind of um, thinking about how you can reuse what you already have or reduce the amount of things that you're taking in and consuming is something that's really important to keep in mind as well. Because recycling is something that we can definitely continue to do but it's also really important to remember that, you know, reusing and cutting down is what we really need to ultimately strive for a zero waste planet. Yeah, on our Instagram, we, I, we made a post about upcycling, which basically um, reuses like, um, like plastic or maybe clothes or anything like that and just making them into like these really um, creative creations. So just having that mindset of reusing those type of things that people would try to normally throw away is something that I think that people should really try to do more often. Just try to reuse those things, recycle, and try not to try to not make the a lot of waste. I guess. Yeah, and what I love so much about upcycling is that it totally shifts us away from just like saying that I'm gonna throw this like bottle into a can and it's just going to go somewhere and I won't have to worry about it anymore to actually thinking about where it's going to go next. Because if you recycle um, a bottle or anything really, um, it, there's a lot of things that go into turning it into something new, you know, a lot of transportation required, a lot of carbon emissions required, a lot of energy required to turn that into something new. So instead, if you could use it in your own life, you know, how about make a bird feeder? and kind of repurposing something and upcycling it into something that can have a positive impact on the world while also not having that extra additional impact, environmental impact. So that's why I really love upcycling and I'm really hopeful that it's a new um, shift that we can create in our movement and something that we can push forward more definitely. Yeah. I think just to add on about upcycling, um, like Purva mentioned, bird feeders, but also fashion. And I feel like mm. that's something that is um, really, I'm really passionate about too, fast fashion. And um, in the, I, I want to change it. I want to change it for the good. I remember watching an episode of Patriot Act where I was first introduced to this idea of fast fashion. And then I started doing more research about it. And like, um, I read a few articles. I wrote an article for my school newspaper and it just, it was brought to my attention that um, our fashion industry is changing. And these stores may claim that they are using um, you know, sustainable or creating sustainable products, but we all know that's a lie or a facade that they've created so that people feel like, oh, I'm wearing these clothes, but I'm also helping my planet. Mm -hmm. However, it's a white lie, and which is why I have so much faith in upcycling and that it's like a new initiative that's going to bring change for the good in our world because. There's a lot of potential, um, but it needs to work and people need to believe in it to, for it to work. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting that um, you guys mentioned about also not just redirect, not just focusing mainly on recycling, but also focusing directing towards, towards reusing, reducing and also upcycling. I'm like, yeah, because I feel like most like all environmentally related products, they're all like so focused on recycle and just recycle the word just gets reused over and over. But like also focusing on, we need to like reduce how much we use 
and just reduce our consumption rates and all that in order to reduce all of our like trash we produce. Yeah, exactly. And I actually really like what Varija mentioned about fast fashion because what I see so often is uh, this thing that companies do and um, a lot of people call it greenwashing. And it's basically kind of making people feel like they're buying into a sustainable brand. And, you know, they see this green fashion line that is made from recycled clothes. So they're like, oh, this entire company must be sustainable just because of this one clothing line that they put out or this one model that they put out. So it kind of feeds into this uh, like consumer satisfaction kind of that we feel comforted that we bought something that was sustainable while this company or fast fashion brand was actually lying to us and telling us that we were buying something that was actually environmentally friendly while their entire like fashion line ends up um, emitting and uh, affecting our planet in a lot of harmful ways. So I think if we can definitely like look into more of sustainable brands and keep in mind that, you know, it's more important that we what we have is quality, not quantity, and being a little bit more willing to um, invest into products that were made ethically and with, you know, people that are actually being paid to, um, paid well for their work and their labor. So I think that's another important aspect of environmental justice because uh, at the same time as the environment is being harmed, people are also being harmed. You know, their labor is being stolen. They're being asked to overwork hours in factories and areas where there's so much air and water pollution. So this isn't just a planet issue. This is a people issue. This is something that crosses so many borders and rifts and it's important that we come together to fight for not just our planet, but for one another. Yeah, it's not like about like, I guess just trying, it is about saving the earth, but it's also about the saving the earth and also saving us as well, because we are the people that are living on in this environment. This is our home. And if we don't act upon it or try to change our actions, then in the future, it's just not going to turn out right. Are there any like big goals for your organization or personal goals you guys want to accomplish before this year ends? There's like a few things. So like in terms of buy the plastic bags, we definitely want to continue to grow our outreach and build more skills with uh, other youth because the whole reason why I wanted to uh, start this organization was because around me I didn't see that many resources, that many people um, engaged in environmental issues. Like in my school, there weren't many conversations happening about these things. So I really wanted to open up spaces where people could feel comfortable sharing their experiences in nature, how they're being affected by um, environmental crises and feel motivated and having a space where they could be uplifted to take action about environmental issues. So that's definitely something that I hope to do as an organization. And I also hope to continue to build those connections. As Barry just said before, um, not all of us have been able to see each other in person. I'm really hoping that we can make it a much more like a closer bond between our members and really help ourselves find not just this as a work opportunity, but also something that is fun and is really bringing us joy in our day-to-day -day lives. And on a personal level, I really hope to continue to um, advocate within the climate movement. You know, I've been able to do a lot of climate activism and over the course of these few years, I really realized the importance of storytelling in this moment. You know, mm. like we tend to like push forward facts and information. And it's really important that this isn't just a movement of our minds, you know, we have to tug at people's heartstrings too, because it's an emotional crisis. People across the world are being hurt. The planet is being hurt. So it's really important that we show people on an emotional level, on a personal level, um, through our stories, through our personal losses, um, and uplifting marginalized communities who have had those personal experiences, especially. Um, because I cannot say that I've had to drink water that was filled with 
lead poisoning or toxic waste because I haven't experienced that. Um, but from the, just the few experiences, just like the few experiences that I have had, I know that it's something that's so important to me. For example, when I was around the age of eight, um, a large forest that was by my house was co completely deforested. And so that experience is like really affected me. And I wasn't able to really understand how a company would value, you know, its own profit over mm -hmm. the lives of these animals and this community that was living in the forest because I didn't see their intentions. I only saw these rabbits and deer and squirrels that were living in this forest. So at that age, it was just like a very eye-opening reality that um, helped me realize that there were people that kind of were putting their profits over lives. So that's what really, I guess, was that like first push that helped me get involved in environmental activism. And so for the future, that's definitely something that I want to keep in mind forever and continue to push forward that people share personal narratives and things that affected them personally, because those are the things that push us forward on a new level and create a community, a bond between all of us emotionally too. In terms of my goals, um, through Bye Bye Plastic Bag, I want to help increase our social media reach and just um, partner with organizations like yours to just help promote our cause together. Um, in terms of my personal goals, something I really want to tackle the issue of fast fashion any way that I can. So um, to make sure that I buy secondhand clothes, help promote businesses. I mean, I feel like people think that uh, when you're told to support businesses, they think it just means like buying from them, but it also means just helping promote them. So talking about businesses that uplift in my community so that I can uh, help inform other people about it too. Also mm -hmm. to continue reducing, reusing, recycling, saving light when we're not in the house, informing people, my neighbors, my close family, friends. Also uh, really promoting our campaign we have a petition going on to um, ban single-use plastics in New Jersey so spreading the word in our community and through social media um, I really want to help advocate for that as well wow yeah it's really inspiring just listening to you guys talk about like your personal goals and wanting to address all of these different environmental related problems yeah yeah and like also um there's a lot of there was this one time when one of my neighbors was pouring out like this top this type of toxic like toxins out of on the streets and it was really bad and um i think it was like but after a day the toxins became white and then we had to call um the police and just to try to clean that up so it's just really sad how people can be just so careless to throw away um like such dangerous toxins um plastic waste out and not having a care in the world for their environment yeah, that's definitely a real challenge and something that i've noticed is like i guess inside of these environmental spaces like especially like talking to you guys and to all the communities that I'm a part of, it can kind of feel like I'm in a bubble, you know, surrounded by like-minded people who share these common goals and this passion for environmental advocacy. And when I kind of just go out into the world and I see people doing these things and just kind of polluting and polluting and just kind of being careless with their actions, it's like a harsh reality and it's like an awakening of what we're fighting for and why we're trying to advocate for these things because a lot of people, first of all, are ignorant about the consequences of their actions, but another large um, proportion of people are also just not educated about it. They don't know better. And so because of that, that's why movements like Buy the Plastic Bags, I think are so valuable, is because they provide that education. Because before, I never imagined that plastic pollution was such a big issue, especially because I don't live in a coastal community um, so many areas rely on the ocean as the life source. Mm -hmm. So I've never really had been like put in, put that into perspective. But after like learning about these issues, I realized how interconnected our world really is and how important it is that we kind of try to bridge those differences and continue, even though it might be a challenge to try to educate people, even if unfortunately 
some of them continue to be ignorant and kind of be careless with their actions. Mm -hmm. And I feel like one, multiple reminders can go a long way. Uh, yeah, someone makes a mistake. So what? You remind them. You tell them not to do it again. And hopefully, um, maybe if not the first time, then the second time or the third time it sticks and then they, um, and then you've made your difference. Uh, also, another uh, personal goal, going back to your question, I would love to participate in like an actual strike or protest. Um, if we do have one, I'm not sure because every everything that's going on with our current global pandemic, but just um, I've seen so many pictures and I've heard so many experiences from fellow protesters about how it's just that community and the, it's a whole different vibe as they've ex experienced and I quote, so I will love to participate in one of those okay here is the last question before we wrap up this interview so what are some things that you guys think that the youth can do to decrease plastic footprint and to protect the environment yeah so a lot of this ties back into what we've been saying before but of course there is that individual level you know there's so many ways you can creatively unleash um, your interests into doing this you know if you're into art you can find creative ways of creating art from plastic that you might have lying around in your house so there's like this really huge opportunity for creatively engaging ourselves individually um, but there's also this opportunity as a community for us to come together um, and fight plastic pollution together. Because as a person, as one individual, it can feel like a lot to process. But yeah. once you're part of a place where there's so many people around you who are motivated and really enthusiastic about creating that change, then you feel like you're a part of something bigger. And this kind of goes back into what Varija was saying. I was able to attend one climate strike, but I really hope to attend them in the future because it's just such a powerful, incredible moment in your life where you're part of something so much bigger than yourself but also you're one individual and that individual matters um just my tips for everyone to really follow through on um one is reduce the intake of animal products and try to eat a locally grown um fresh produce because um there's just so much that goes on and eating animal products, then their um, transportation, all of that, it just increases your carbon footprint. Um, also trying to travel carbon free wherever possible. If you can walk or ride your bike, then choose that option over um, driving to a local place if it is within walking or biking distance also reducing reusing recycling um buying secondhand clothes if possible um i don't know how many times i've said it already but um fast fashion is something that it is in our control um and then working together to campaign for real systemic change. So uh, whether it is talking to your local government or writing a letter to um, your local newspaper, emailing your um, congressmen or congresswoman, just telling them about your ideas and what um, plastic pollution means to you. All of those are ways that you can take action in your local communities. Yeah, and I just want to reinforce again that we at Violet Plastic Bags New Jersey are so, so eager and happy to have anyone's voice involved. So mm -hmm. definitely feel free to reach out to us. And we have so many motivated members that are really eager to help you out and excited to um, encourage you to make use of any resources or tools that you need um, to become a future environmental leader and be a change maker for real change in our communities across the globe. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you guys for joining us. I personally learned quite a lot from just talking to you guys just about the fast fashion that you guys mentioned, greenwashing, and just um, taking steps individually, but also like community-wide in order to spark change. So, yeah, it was really nice talking to you guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you so much. We learned so much from this experience, and I feel like connecting with each other as organizations. It's a truly fulfilling experience knowing that we're in this together. And I hope that we can continue to support each other in the future.
Thanks for listening. Check us out on Instagram at earthlinking2020. Check out our website on Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at earthlinking team. Donate to our GoFundMe located in the description box of our first video. And this is Earth Listening. See you in the next episode.